Hi everybody and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every time. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we've got you covered. So before we get into some Major League Baseball action for this weekend, which would be August the 21st, I want to invite you to join so you will have access to the VIP Club section, which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So let's take a look at some of the games here. There's a full slate of games as we are approaching the final about six weeks of the Major League Baseball season, so the playoff races are really starting to heat up. So let's get started. The first game we want to look at is the Houston Astros and the Atlanta Braves. In this interleague matchup, the Astros come into play average up. You can see that they have won four out of their last six, but they lost two out of their last three. While the Braves are burning hot down, they're coming off of a loss that they won their previous five before that. On the power ranking indicator, the Braves have been steady here at the top at plus 29 over the last few days. While the Astros were up at plus 27, they dipped significantly just over the course of one day, but they have climbed back up to plus 19. If you look at the over-under, you can see that Houston has been involved in games over the line in four out of the last six, and Atlanta over the line in two out of, the, out of their last four. The score predictor likes Atlanta by a 6-1 to one score with about 55% level of confidence. And that confidence was at 60% a little bit earlier on. So you can see that has, dri has, has dropped. So, you know, keep your eye on that as it gets closer and closer to game time. Jose Ricudi is scheduled to pitch for Houston. Ricudi is 11-4 uh, with a 3.69 ERA and a plus $491 on the pitch of profit oscillator. So that, what does that mean? That means that he has been very consistent. He's been a very good bet. He's been pitching very well. As far as being a good bet is concerned, plus four hundred and ninety-one dollars. Overall, let's see what's going to happen here on the volatility officer, because this is kind of important too to see how stable the teams have been. You see that both teams have been very consistent, very stable, meaning that they've been performing consistently with regards to their favorite underdog status. Both teams have been on an upward climb pretty much all year in that category. In the end, I like the Braves at home to win this one in a game going under the line. Another great matchup, the New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies. In this National League East rivalry game, the Mets come in in first place, while the Phillies are in third, but they are in good position for a wild card spot. The Mets are average status at the moment. They are 3-3 three and three over their last six games, but they have lost two out of their last three. While the Phillies are average down there, coming off of a loss, and are also 3-3 three and three over their last six games. The score prediction likes the Mets by a 7-5 to five score, with a confidence in prediction of about 58%. And that is down from 61% a little bit earlier on. Um, if you take a look at the over-under, you can see that the Mets have been involved in games under the line in four out of the last six. The Phillies in five out of the last six. So that's expecting a low scoring game. The score prediction is having a higher scoring game. So I would avoid betting the over-under in this one because the conflicting reports. Um, Philadelphia is up at plus 24 on the... Power ranking indicator while the Mets they were at plus 28 and they are now at plus 17. You notice that neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet. Uh, the stability factor the Mets much more stable than the Phillies at plus 29 compared to plus 8. Although the Phillies have been increasing in that department uh, lately, as of we should go down here, you can see that they were at what they were actually negative for quite some time. So at plus 8. They've been more consistent as of late. In the end, I like the Mets in a close game. It's going to be a very close game. It's going to be a great weekend series. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know who's going to win the series. I'm thinking two games to one either way. It's going to be a great series. Every game should be relatively close. And in this one, I like the Mets. Next game we want to look at is the Angels and the Tigers. Neither team is coming in playing very well. Uh, the Angels are ice cold down. You can see there are two and four over their last six games. And the Tigers are also two and four over their last six games. Shohei Otani is scheduled to pitch for the Angels versus Eduardo Rodriguez for Detroit. Otani is 10 and seven with a 2.69 ERA and minus 222 on the pitcher profit oscillator. His away ERA is better than at home, so the away ERA is at 3.18. Rodriguez is 1 and 3 with a 4.38 ERA, and he has been a worse bet than Otani at minus $534. The score predictor has the Angels by a 3 to 1 score. You notice that would be a very low scoring game with confidence in prediction of 
which kind of goes against what um, has happened lately between uh, amongst these two teams, not head to head, but overall, you can see that the Angels have been involved in games over the line in four out of the last six, and Detroit over the line in four out of the last five. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you can see Detroit there at zero, and they have climbed significantly just over the last uh, what couple days from zero to nineteen, and the Angels have dropped from twenty-two down to 17, where they have been consistent over the last two days. The volatility oscillator shows Detroit at plus 33, the Angels at plus 20, so both teams have been pretty stable, consistently performing with regard to their favorite underdog status. In this game here, I think that the Angels will come away with the win, even though they are on the road. I just like the Angels in this one. Uh, low scoring game, though, I think, and I would bet it would be a game maybe by two, maybe three runs at the most, Angels on top. Next game we want to look at is the Brewers and the Cubs. In this NL Central battle, you can see that the Brewers come in ice cold down, the Cubs are burning hot. The Brewers are coming off of a loss, and they have lost four out of their last six games, while the Cubs have won their last two and are four and two over their last six. The pitching matchup, the Cubs have not named their starting pitcher yet, but Brandon Woodruff has been scheduled for the Brewers. He is 9-3 and three of the 3.53 ERA and is a very nice bet at plus $201 on the pitcher profit oscillator. If you look at the over-under, you can see that the Brewers have been involved in games under the line in 4 out of their last 6, while the Cubs have been involved in games over the line in 4 out of their last 6. So, what does the, the uh, score predictor show? A 4-1 to one prediction in favor of the Cubs with a 70% level of confidence. I'm kind of leaning that way as well, but let's take a look at a couple more things. The power ranking indicator shows the Cubs were at plus 6, and they have increased to plus 17. And Milwaukee was at plus 16 there, down to plus 7. In the end, I like the Cubs in this one, in a game going under the line. Giants and the Rockies. Seattle and Oakland. In this AL West matchup, you can see the Seattle is coming in burning hot. They have won four in a, well, three in a row, excuse me, and four out of their last six. While the A's are average up, coming off of a four-game losing streak, they have won their last two over Texas. Seattle has been involved in games over the line in their last six, while the A's have been involved in games over the line in four out of their last six. So a lot of high-scoring games with these two teams. And this could be no another one as well. The score prediction has Seattle with a 9-1 to one win. I like the high score for Seattle. I think Oakland will score a few more runs than that. Confidence in prediction of 58%. The power ranking indicator, Oakland was at zero. They increased significantly just over the last two days to plus 20 because of their recent two wins, and Seattle from plus 12 up to plus 23. Neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet, so we can't look at that. Uh, the volatility oscillator, both teams showing uh, pretty good stability here, actually very good at plus 27 for Oakland and plus 21 for Seattle. In the end, I like this to be a high-scoring game. I will bet over the line, and I think Seattle will stay hot and come away with the win. Miami and the Dodgers, St. Louis and Arizona. You see it's a full slate of games. The last game we want to look at is Baltimore and Boston. Boston comes in burning hot, and Baltimore averaged down. You can see Boston has won their last three and five out of their last six. While Baltimore is 3-3 three and three over the last six, and they have definitely been an improved team this year, one of the most improved teams in the league, if not the most improved team, they are over 500. Um, Nick Pavetta is on, going to be on the mound for Boston. The Orioles have not yet named their starting pitcher. Pavetta, uh, Pavetta is 9-9 nine and nine with a 4.28 ERA, but not a very good bet at minus $167. But his away ERA has been slightly better than home at 4.04. If you look at the over-under, the Red Sox have been involved in games under the line in four out of their last six. Baltimore, uh, even over the last six, three and three, games over and under. The score predictor, like Boston, this would be a higher scoring game, eight to four, with the confidence of prediction, though, of less than a cost of a coin at 44%. The power ranking indicator has Boston here at plus 22. Baltimore at plus eight. You can see just a few days ago it was reversed with Baltimore higher than Boston. Um, the stability factor, again, we like to see how consistent the teams have been. 
you see here over the course of the year, not very consistent. Look at the graphs, up and down, up and down. I mean, Baltimore is now at plus four. They were as high as plus 10, while Boston is now at plus 11. And that looks like that's been well, tied for their highest mark pretty much all season. You can see here, if you go way back, even back into April, they were nowhere near that high. But in, in the end, the, neither team has been very stable. So take their favorite underdog stats with a little bit of green assault before you make this pick. I like the Red Sox in this game, and I think it will be higher scoring. So the Red Sox and over the line. So there you have it. Those are the games for Major League Baseball for August 21st. Happy betting, and we will see you next time.